Welcome to the first episode of the VO Weekly Podcast. I'm your host, Fred Gleek, and every week I'll be interviewing Bill DeWeese, a highly successful voiceover artist and voiceover coach, about what happened during the course of his last seven days. So, Bill, tell me about your week. What didn't happen? That's the question. It's it's been crazy busy. Um, you know, I was I was a little nervous because I had I had a phenomenal week last week. It was like I made over seven or over six thousand dollars last week in, in voiceover. And by the when I give you numbers, I'm not talking about voiceover coaching. I'm talking about voiceover recording. That's a question I get asked. So just for clarification, uh, this week was a short week um, because I was out of town, so I didn't work on Monday. Um, but I've been very busy. And even as I speak, this is Friday, late Friday afternoon, Mallory, my daughter slash assistant is actually finishing up the editing of my last project of the week. And as soon as she finishes, she's going to dial in and give us numbers. Sounds on that. Good. So, so there was, I mean, gosh, I started off the week with a, I had a commercial for a bariatric surgery, um, place in Fresno. It was a spot for that market. So I did that. How'd, how'd you get that one? Um, that one, how did I get that one? That was through my website. I think, yes. If I was found, I, I have a lot of stuff. As you know, Fred, I, I set up a lot of places for people to stumble across me out there. That's part of my marketing. And, uh, that one, I, if I recall, came through my actual website. The producer picked me for that because he said I sounded real. So that, that was the benefit there. Uh, I did a commercial for some in cinema advertising, you know, a company that provides advertising when you go to the movies, you know, the, the yep. pre movie advertising, uh, did one of those, did some on hold messaging. Uh, I have a regular client that I do a regional automotive commercial for. I did commercials for them. I did promos for, there's a TV show called Forbes living. It airs on discovery and ABC and Fox. It's syndicated. We TV ion. I'm the voice of that this What's week on Forbes yeah. living. Tell, give me an idea for people who are watching and listening as to what percentage of this week's revenue came from existing clients versus new business. Yeah, now this is going to be a rough number because I don't know exactly. Yeah. But I'm just going to say based, generally speaking, I'm going to say about 75% from established clients and 25%, 20 to 25% would be new business. And would that be a typical week, you think? Yeah, that's, yeah I'd say that's pretty average. So when, I, always, I always have to, you know, you want fresh blood, you know, new... New clients coming in because it's, it's it, things dry up if you don't, yeah. you know, and I could live for a while with my current clients, but eventually you've got to get new ones. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I did Forbes Living, which is, again, TV promos. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, lots of training in there. And by the way, I'm just I'm just on Tuesday, the first day that I worked this week so far. Lots of uh, I did hazmat training. I did tech, you know, uh, some software company training. I do podcasts for the insurance division of Accenture that they have on iTunes. So I'm the voice of that. Um, and those were the main projects for Tuesday. OK, so then on Tuesday, give me an idea. You said you did a fair amount of narration work. How many pages of narration did you do Tuesday? Ballpark. Um, probably, I'm going to say between 20 and 30. Got it. Which is pretty, you know, that's pretty common. As a matter of fact, I mean, just before us getting on Skype together, I just completed a 26-page narration for Hitachi. That was my last project of the week. And about how long did that take you to do completing it? Took me about an hour and a half okay, to, now to record it. That doesn't include Mallory's editing time, correct? correct? Yeah, that's just recording time. How uh, much would you guess she spent on that on editing? How long she's taking? Um, she'll spend probably 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so total length of that then to get uh, twenty-seven pages done, about an hour and forty-five, including editing. Yeah, 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 and that's—I mean—that's a good project. That'll pay pretty well. So that's nice... how much that's going to pay. So I can compute our uh... about a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. That's my so biggest we... project of the week. Got it. So that looks like uh, about, you know, in terms of dollars per hour, that's like over 500 bucks an hour. Yeah, that's not bad. No, I wouldn't say. That's, that's not bad. I, I didn't know if my throat would hold out. I mean, it's the last project of the week, and I've been cranking it out all week long. So I was like, oh, hold on, hold on. You just make it through this one. That's a good question for people who are probably listening or watching who'd want to ask, which is, given the amount of work that you do, I mean, as the week goes on, the voice starts to suffer a bit. Are you telling me? Uh, I it, my voice doesn't really suffer, but what does happen if I have a long day, or particularly a long week, and then I end it with a long day, meaning ninety minutes of nonstop narration, I can feel it. Uh, you know, it'll occasionally I'll I'll uh, crack on a word, and I'll have to back up and 
So overall, I don't think you would be able to tell by listening to the project, but occasionally I'll be talking the... (laughs) You know, I'll, I'll crack on a word, so I have to back up. And what I do, though, Fred, to help myself out, is I pace myself. I set goals. So 26 pages, I broke it down into, I did um, like eight or nine pages at a time. And then I'd take a break, go get some more coffee, you know, and then come back down and chew a piece of gum for a minute or two to kind of clean everything out. And then i dig back into another eight or nine pages. Got it. And so that's that's the trying to make sure that you hit your 12 to 15 cups daily uh, <laughs> yeah, goal. That's, right. that's how I do that. I just pace now, myself. That, for, those of, for those who don't know you, who may be listening to you for the first po- uh, time, given this is uh, a new podcast yeah. launch, tell people, I mean, what is your daily coffee consumption? And explain that to yeah, us. Yeah, I, mean, I do two pots a day, uh, one in the morning and then one right after lunch. And, and my wife, I mean, you know, she grabs a, a cup before she goes takes off in the morning. So it's not all me. And, you know, in all, in all honesty, I don't drink every drop of it. Coffee gets cold. I'll dump some out and I'll go back and get some fresh. But, you know, we do two pots a day. Yeah, because many people think that uh, caffeine or anything of that, you know, caffeine or anything with, with dairy is, a, is the wrong thing to do as a voiceover artist. So I guess you're dispelling that myth or you're fighting through it. I'm a hard living voice talent. I do everything wrong. I, I, you know, I drink milk. I, I have milk on my cereal in the morning. I drink coffee. I guess people could say I do it the wrong way. I don't know, but I'm not, ha- don't seem to be having any problems as a result. Okay. So let's carry on then. Okay. Uh, tell me a little bit about the next day, Wednesday, what happened? Yeah. Wednesday it actually started off very interestingly because I was contacted to do an audition for a Sam Elliott soundalike commercial. Okay. Now the person pres- you know, I assume they actually heard my demos. I mean, they, they, they came to me and said, would you please read this for me? Well, if you, I mean, I don't sound anything like Sam Elliott, the Dodge Ram truck guy. Not anything like him. But right. I gave my best, you know, I just, I figured, well, you know, I, I can talk from my lower register, but it's not going to sound like Sam Elliott. So I sent it out, and then today I got, I got an email message a few minutes ago, well, actually an hour ago or so, saying, oh, the, the client decided, yeah, he doesn't want Sam Elliott after all. He's looking for a son of Sam Elliott. So... I just had to <laughs> whatever that means. They want a younger sounding guy oh, than Sam yeah. Elliott. But but the moral of that story is that clients don't even really always know what they want. They may say what they think they want, but in the end they know it when they hear it. And then when they don't like what they hear, they know it, but we get so wrapped up in direction and we think, "Okay, I've got to you know, sometimes you just got you do the best you can and not worry so, about it. So is the moral of that story that you maybe should have read it in just your standard voice rather than trying to lower your register? It, probably what I should have done, actually, it's a good question. I should have probably given an alternate read. By yeah. the way, that's what I'm here for. I, <laughs> you're very good at it. I'm in good hands right now. I, I should have given an alternate read that was just probably my, my natural self. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so on uh, on Wednesday, what else happened other than the uh, oh, Son of Sam? Oh, uh, radio imaging. I have several uh, clients, radio stations, and a radio network that I am the voice of. So I, you know, where you um, where you say, you know, the home of light rock for the Shenandoah Valley, or you know, whatever. So I do some of that. Um, I did a uh, a tag for a hospital commercial in another market someplace. Um, I was, I was looking at some notes. I was contacted by a production company in New York City. Oh, yeah, okay. I had, Wednesday was inter- I'm sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. Wednesday was interesting because I was contacted, like, by a, a production company in New York and in San Francisco, like, bam, bam, right back to back. And actually, I got hired. Um, I've already been hired by the San Francisco company. I've completed that project. Still waiting to hear back from the New York company. That wasn't for the same job. No, no, they, they were different jobs. But it was a good one. When you wake up and you see your inbox is already, you're getting messages from production companies saying, hey, uh, would you be interested in doing this? It's a good day. Now, let me ask you that. I, let's just say that those two production companies, for some, you know, for some ungodly reason, had called you for the same job. Um, let's just say that that happened or two agents call yeah, you for the yeah, same job. That's common. Yeah, who gets who gets the work? Do you do it based on who contacted you first? Yeah, proper etiquette is to go with with who contacts you um, first. And as a matter of fact, it's interesting. I got a call from uh, an agent in New York today, and he said, um, "By the way, he said we're getting ready to send you a bunch of new stuff." And he said, "If there's a conflict with anybody else who sends this to you, he said defer to them." <laughs> I don't know why he would do that, but he said just go ahead and do theirs. Don't worry about it. Um, wow. So they, the agents know it. I mean, we have too much business already. Just give it to someone else. <laughs> give, it to, yeah, give it to somebody else. Exactly. And also, I fired a client on Wednesday. Oh well, tell us about that. Yeah. You don't have to give specific names. No. Names 
on request. And when I say fired is a harsh word, I did. I really didn't. I let them go. And uh, let me explain. Well, that's a way of saying fired. F- yeah. Okay. <laughs> Part of my business plan has been to. Um, is to work my kind of way up the food chain, the voiceover food chain. So as I've been able to uh, to get and cultivate higher paying clients, I've been systematically systematically letting go of the lower pay ones. Okay, and, and based on what criteria have you been sort of ferreting those out? Mostly by pay. I mean, time, energy, effort, and what I get in return for it. And I've been working for these guys. Are, I mean, they're great people. I've worked for them for probably seven years. Wow. And, you know, and it's just a, it's a weekly retainer and they send me scripts and I do it, but it's on hold in the grand scheme of things on hold marketing doesn't pay nearly as much as narration and commercial work. So, um, yeah, I had, I had to let them go because it was just, and So, how did you do that? Explain to us exactly what you did. Yeah. I usually, I, I will leave with, I'll send an email and, um, and I'll thank them for the opportunity to have worked for them. I've certainly appreciate it, but my business has continued to grow. And it's just not financially viable for me to continue working with them because of the rates that I'm, I'm now getting for my current clients. Now, I've done that a number of times over the years, and more times than not, the client will come back and counter. And, this, and I haven't heard back yet from this company, so because uh, I just, you know, this is recent, but so we'll see. What percentage of your Dear John emails result in that happening? Um, I would say at least half, maybe 75%. And when they come back to you with a counter offer, how often do you accept? Um, so far, I've accepted all of them. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So uh, then, what I'll do is, it, and I'm already at a place now where I'm, you know, like I have one client in particular where the counter and what I'm getting is now starting to not just be enough because I my my income keeps going up. How long ago did you accept the counter? So it's about what? a year. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. So every year, it's probably worth reviewing. You probably wouldn't go back to them sooner than within eight or 10 or 12 months to say, oh, by the way. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, I'd hang with them for a while, you know, a That's year or two. Not, it's not, it's not fair. But in the time that I spend doing work for them, I could send out, you know, five auditions and land a 500 or a thousand dollar job. Right. That could be worth much, much way more. more. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So what, uh, anything else on Wednesday? Well, uh, no, that was, that was the bulk of Wednesday. Those are some of the highlights. Anyhow, I think I did a few other things, but those are the highlights. Thursday, um, I did a nonprofit radio station. I, I, there's, a, there's a radio network out there called the Way FM Radio Network, and uh, they play contemporary Christian music, and um, they do a good job. I have a kind of a soft spot in my heart for those guys. And so they, they don't pay me nearly as much as what I get for doing commercial work, but, I like, but occasionally they'll send me a script to do, so I did that. Um, I did four, um, four scripts for a, uh, a training company, uh, like software training, and that I wanted to mention that just because, as unglamorous as it seems, that's my bread and butter. And, you know, doing stuff like for Hitachi and Dell. I did a Microsoft project today. It was training for the Microsoft 365 platform. Um, that's my bread and butter. Training stuff like that. Now, one of the things you've told me face to face, which I think is interesting, is that oftentimes you are reading, you know, copy that you don't even know what it means. Most times <laughs> I'm reading copy, I have no idea what it means. Like today, can I, may I give you a, a sample? Yeah, please. Yeah, let me see if I can make sure I haven't deleted this yet. Um, I mean, that's not it. Give me just a second here. Yeah, I, an unintelligent, massive I think, I think, you, and I don't think I'm revealing in here the thing that I shouldn't. Uh, but let's, uh, this is just a little... Wait a minute. Let me find with a bunch of really awesome lingo. Okay, here's one. Hitachi Storage Virtualization Operating System, or SVOS, spans our smallest entry storage platform. Hitachi Virtual Storage Platform G200, VSP G200, to the most scalable Hitachi Virtual Storage Platform G1000, VSP G1000. Hitachi SVOS is an integrated software system that provides blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you just, uh, and I'm sure it's wonderful. I just don't yeah. understand it. Right. And, and so you, what you're telling me is that it, it isn't necessary uh, for you to understand in order to read and get paid for reading copies. Maybe it's even preferable that I don't. That way I don't get overly excited. <laughs> now, right. yeah, it's not necessary. Your read becomes much more relaxed. <laughs> That's right. Because yeah. I have no idea what I'm I saying. I literally am thinking about what I'm going to do this weekend. <laughs> right. Well, we don't tell them that because I love that work, but it's just, you know, I don't really 
know what I'm talking about. And when you say you do the, that's the bulk of your work, when you say the bulk of it, what percentage of your work every week is that? I, at least 60%, probably closer to 70%. Gotcha. And I don't think it's that unusual. I think if you were to talk to most voiceover talent who do this full time, you know, and a lot of a lot of voice talent are almost apologetic. They're like, well, you know, I do a lot of narration, but occasionally I do commercials. Yeah. That's the way it is for everybody. I mean, there's not there's much more. There's tons of narration work out there. Just lots of right. it. Right. And so you're saying that for someone who is, uh, depending on where they are in their voiceover career, maybe just getting started, that that really is the bread and butter, even as yeah. you move up the the food chain. Yeah. So you just have to know that up front, and it's not glamorous. It's not fun to talk about at a cocktail party, I imagine. Uh, but it's, it, hey, it pays, and frankly, I enjoy doing it. I love doing it. I'd, I'm glad to do it. Got it. Okay, so tell me about, uh, was that all that Thursday? That was Thursday, and there were some other jobs, which I don't remember, thrown in. I do anywhere from maybe 5 to 10 a day on average. Um, today, I, I started working for, I'm, I'm the new voice of uh, New Mexico PBS, the TV. Well, that, well, that's something you should put out in a press release. So, oh, yeah, I guess maybe I should. Hey, there you go. Good thing. Oh, hold on. Mallory's checking in. This is uh, Mallory, my daughter, and a, an assistant. Let me pull her in here real quick. Hey, Mallory. Hey. Hey, welcome to the show. Say hi to Fred. Hey there. I'm on the show. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Hey, Fred. How are you there doing? Hey, Fred, how are you? We can't see you. I assume you haven't had your hair done. Uh, what? You can't see me? I can really? see you. Impressed accept or something. Oh, I pressed. Uh, no, you're on. No, she's there. You're on. You're on. Oh, I have to accept here. Okay. Oh well, whatever. I I'm seeing a blue. Oh, there you are. Wow. In her magenta. A, yeah. Ah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Now, how can you not see me? No. <laughs> so, so you got some numbers for us today? I do. I do. Sorry. It's, uh, Friday just seems like it's a rush to the finish line every week. So uh, I apologize for calling so late. Um. I do have numbers. Good. Uh, we finished up a fairly large narration at the end of the day, so that gave us a, a nice little boost. Um, so our total this week in voiceovers is $4,327. That's pretty respectable. Yeah. You, I mean, you, yeah, a little shy okay. of a, our goal of 5000 but um, we had a lot of stuff kind of just hanging in the balance there at the end it was and a four-day so, week too true you didn't even work on monday yeah. so had, it been, had you had another day in there mallory it would have hit the five thousand for sure oh yeah we probably would have gone well over it yeah uh, i'm thinking and and you know i have a project out there still too that i don't even i don't know how much it pays yet so <laughs> although it's already been completed yeah yeah <laughs> so it. so we'll see Okay. We'll okay. See. Sounds we good. Some nice stuff for next week. We've got a phone patch on Monday morning, and oh, who's that with? Three new videos coming through. Uh, uh, production house, um, black box. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, you just gotta confirm the time on that. So, so I, I suspect that Mallory will have to become a regular weekly featured <laughs> artist, contributor to the show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the numbers lady. Hey, thanks for <laughs> great. Yeah. No, thanks, appreciate it. All right. See All you right. later. Bye. 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 So there you go. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, why don't you explain to people, so what, what Mallory does is what for you, for those who, are, who don't know? Everything but sit behind the microphone. I mean, literally, she, um, uh, she, she deals with clients all day long. She's the one checking the inbox, so she knows the projects. She understands, she prioritizes and is kind of air traffic control. She tells me what to do and when to do it and when to stop what I'm doing and move to something else because of time, you know, timelines. Uh, but she also handles all of the, um, you know, my invoicing, and and she does the collections and all that. And also on the voiceover training site, she's the one that that you're most likely to, uh, or very likely to get an email from or a response from when you email. Well, given this is our first podcast, I'm sure we'll have it uh, we'll have it somewhere on the screen, giving people directions on where to go to find out more information. But if they do want more information, Bill, um, and again, have we finished up Friday? Uh, no, I've got a few more things. I did the you know, New Mexico PBS. I recorded a promo for a brand new weather app. Um, I did some uh, alcohol compliance training for Aramark, who they you know they set up the big venues and have to train their service personnel when to when to not serve any more alcohol. And does that affect your own alcohol intake at all, sir? No, don't don't consume that much to begin with. So. Uh, 
But it's funny. I do a lot of alcohol, tra- a, lot, a lot of alcohol compliance training, not just for Aramark, but also for driver safety. And I tell you, once you start looking at the stats, you really start thinking twice about <laughs> drinking and driving. I'll tell you that. Oh, um, yeah. I did a um, an online promo for a new job search platform. And I, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I also I recorded some training for Microsoft Office 365. One of the things I should have asked Mallory while she was on, and maybe you know this, maybe you don't, uh, we had a total of $4,327 or whatever it was. How many total jobs was that? Do you recall? Mm, no, I mean, that's, yeah. I tell you what, what I, I don't know that exactly. And what makes that hard to keep up with is because not all the jobs I do are paying jobs. Some are pick what we call pickups, where the job's complete, but there have been some minor adjustments, and I always include a round of that. So sometimes a project is like updates to something I've already been paid on. So, you know, we're probably talking on average five, six paid jobs a day. Got it. Got it. Ish. Yeah. For, for people who aren't real familiar with the process, yeah. that's it for them to know. Good. So uh, let's see here. Well, this is the first one of these. And uh, I don't want to stretch it out artificially, you know, do this kind of thing. Um, <laughs> so, so tell us, is there anything more that we should talk about or should we uh, just send people on the way? You know, one, one thing, I'm kind of excited, uh, is some, of the, the oper- or some of the audition opportunities I've been getting lately, especially in the area of network TV promos. And, um, and so I'm getting a lot more of that work sent, well, I should say audition sent my way. And we're still waiting, you know, still waiting for something to break through. It takes a while. You have to prove to people... They want to hear you for a while before, especially at that level, before they hire you. So I've been, I started auditioning maybe a year ago for a lot of this stuff. And, and that uh, was of having a new agent? Yes, yes. Working with an agent that specializes in network promos. And yeah. uh, so they have confidence in my ability to do that. But they said, you know, these people have to get comfortable with you. So just yep. keep auditioning. So like today I did like Fox Sports for baseball specifically. Um Something else for I can't remember offhand. Are we are we able to play that for people so they can hear yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, if you can bear with me for just a second, I think I can do sure, that. I think it'd be kind of cool for people. To, I mean, we're not yeah. violating no. any ethical things that we have in place. And for those watching on YouTube, I'm bringing up my Adobe Audition, <laughs> and I'm going to have to. So instead of seeing Fred's face, you're seeing my Adobe Audition right now. But let me just. I have to dig in to my files here to find it. So, and if we can be using my video for this portion, but that would be a mess to try and do one of each. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. I'm almost there. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We'll end with this. Okay. And so where did you go? Where did you go? I know it's in there. Oh, there it is. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going, I actually have to play this through my headphones so you can hear it. So for that to work, I have to change out my earbuds to real headphones. Okay. So I can't hear you right now. Hey, Bill. I know you can't hear me. Okay. Now I'm back. All right. Are you ready? This yeah. is, This is three takes, three in a row for, okay. for Fox uh, Baseball, Major League Baseball and Fox. Here we go. Angels Baseball is here. Share your passion. Angels Baseball is here. Share your passion. Angels Baseball is here. Share your passion. So one of the reasons they wanted me to do it, they said they were just looking for a regular guy. They weren't looking for a promo guy, not a big voice. They just wanted a guy off the street. <laughs> I guess that's me. So, Perfect. Well, hey, great. Uh, Bill, good first effort here, I think. And every week we'll be coming to people, talking to them, uh, doing the VO Podcast Weekly. Excellent, Fred. Thanks a lot. You got it. See you next time.